Welcome to Christian News TY. Two accidents. On April 17, 2022, a vehicle struck a power line pole on Kelly Street in King Street, South Carolina. On Wednesday, April 20, 2022, there was an accident involving a log truck and a mail truck. The driver of the log truck was turning off East Main Street onto Eastland Avenue. According to the driver, there was no vehicle on the right side of the truck in the outer lane before he made his turn. According to a bystander, the mail truck approached the log truck while the truck was making a turn, causing the log to hit the mail truck. Welcome to Christian News TY. My name is Sandra Coates. Some representatives in the State House think differently from the Word of God. Some people believe three representatives on the House roll call vote list are ministers. There might be more. The Word of God is clear. So why are some of the representatives thinking differently? Amendment 6. Ms. Cobb Hunter is recognized on Amendment 6. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker and members, all of us in here feeling all nice and bubbly about Don Staley and the Gamecock Women's National Championship. Has it dawned on any of you what passage of this legislation may well do to our chances of hosting regionals? But those of you who have short memories, because I know some of you think nothing happened until you got here, let me do a little refresher course for you and remind you that it was only up until a couple of years ago that South Carolina was in a position to host regional sporting events. Now, I understand that Coach Staley and her team will be here tomorrow. This amendment says that if there is a transgender girl who comes to this state and participates, what happens then? What happens then? Mr. Speaker and members, what about Title IX? I want to repeat for you something that your current leader has described as your kind of politics. Bumper sticker politics. What I have reminded people of is you can watch the South Carolina legislature, the uh, North Carolina, Georgia, and any other legislature controlled by Republicans, and you will see the same agenda. For some of us, it would be okay if these were original thoughts. They are not. It is coming from the RNC, from ALEC, and the Heritage Foundation. For those of you who swear by those entities, more power to you. But what I am hoping somebody will think about is what the potential effect on this legislation will be in the future. Now, you'll all roll out and have your press conference thump your chest and talk about how great you are because you've discriminated against four children who happen to be transgender. I wonder sometimes, Mr. Speaker, what kind of God some of us are serving. We talk, oh, it's right. That's my reaction. We talk about God and Christian and all of this. Maybe they taught you a different God here in South Carolina. The God that I grew up knowing in South Florida is a God of love. God of love. Y'all are mad all the time. If you're, why are you so angry? Why are you so spiteful toward people who are different? And I see some of y'all smiling. That's great. Ms. Coppinger, I'm sorry to interrupt your ah, time on the Thank you, Mr. Is Speaker. Yes, I'll be ma'am. back. So Remus is recognized. So Remus is recognized. Speak against the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, since we brought God into this, um, let's go there. God created a woman and a man. And the last time I checked, God does not make mistakes. 
I'm not saying that I am against anybody that identifies as a man or a woman. What I'm saying to you is, God doesn't make mistakes. I'm saying just stay in your lane. If you're a man, you are biologically stronger than me. You're, no matter if you have hormone block blockers or not, your vascular strength, your heart is larger, and that's always going to be the case. So how does it, we're not just talking about those four in the state. We are also talking about how it affects us now in a grown-up life. Some of you know that I play tennis, and we currently have a few transgenders that are playing in our tennis leagues as adults. We get out there as women, we get emasculated, we get all over the court, and you know, no matter what we do, we're never going to be as just as fast or just as strong. So it's not only in our colleges, it's reflecting later in life. So let's talk about the NCAA as well. We don't make laws for other states, people. We need to make the laws for South Carolina. So we're not worried about those coming in from other states. And let's talk about that championship from South Carolina. Did we have Kobe Bryant's out there with wigs on winning in that championship? No, we had women who were amazing. And we don't want to take that opportunity. We talk about race. Why would you want to take that opportunity away from those young black women who are rock stars and are amazing? Miss Trantham, she's coached and been a part of the basketball community for a long time. And she's been a part of that, seeing how those girls' lives are changed by building them up and bringing them through that. And if they had a man competing that's always going to be stronger and better than them, that's God talking right there, y'all. That's God. And <laughs> he's telling you to think with your brains and quit taking those opportunities away from those women. And, I mean, we're sitting here divided over this issue, and some are laughing and thinking it's humorous. It is not humorous. Why are we even thinking about this? If you have a little girl, you're going to look her in the eye and put her on the court, a basketball court, with a man out there, or let's look at what's happened with the swimming. That guy was 462nd as in a male swimmer. He comes into the women's league, and guess what? He's number one. What is that? And then you got two other girls, the second and third should have been the true winners, the true winners of the NCAA swimming. That is where we are, guys. Uh, what this particular amendment does, there is a section of this bill uh, which uh, lays out certain findings by the South Carolina General Assembly. Uh, and this amendment would include a very uh, specific and particular finding of fact that is actually a very serious matter um, is that the average life expectancy in America of a black trans woman in the United States is only 35 years. Um, and, you know, we have our differing stances on the issue of transgender in sports, uh, but if we're talking about findings of fact, and we're going to lay out findings of fact in the, in the legislation itself, we need to include facts that let people know it's not okay to discriminate and it's not okay uh, to take hateful acts against uh, trans individuals. Um, by way of background, Dana Martin was 31 when she was killed in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, Jazeline Ware was found dead in her apartment in Memphis, Tennessee. Ashanti Carmen was 27 when she was shot and killed in Prince George's County, Maryland, which is also in the Fourth Circuit with us. Claire Legato was 21 when she was shot and killed in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, Malaysia Booker was shot and killed in Dallas, Texas. She was 23 years old. Paris Cameron was one of three people who were shot and killed in an anti-LGBT hate crime in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, Shano Lindsay was 26 when she was found dead in Dallas, Texas. Uh, Chanel Scurlock was 23 when she was found fatally shot in Lumberton, North Carolina, which is also in the Fourth Circuit with us. Zoe Spears was the same age when she was found lying in the street with signs of trauma in Fairmount Heights, Maryland, who's also in the Fourth Circuit with us. Each of these women were black trans women. Um, the average life expectancy being 35 years old should be very, very shocking. Uh, that just speaks to uh, the level of trauma that these individuals have to endure, whether it be public criticism, whether it be hateful acts, whether it be murderous intent, uh, and the overall stress of living life, trying to be yourself, uh, where you're just not 
It's not that you're just not accepted. It's that you have to live with knowing you're not accepted, but you have to live with the overt acts taken by other people, including the overt acts taken, uh, for instance, with this legislation here in the South Carolina General Assembly. Um, Y'all know the average life expectancy of, of South Carolina citizens is much higher than 35. This would adopt that finding of fact in this legislation, and it sends a very strong signal to uh, the trans community that we do understand that it's not just politics. Um, and if you are watching and listening to this debate, Mr. you need Bamberg, to understand. Your time has expired. Mr. McKnight Thank is you, Mr. Speaker. to speak against the amendment. Mr. McKnight. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, this issue is emotionally charged enough without us bringing in issues of race. This bill, or this amendment, doesn't address the core issue. This issue isn't about all the attendant facts. This issue is specifically tailored sports, high school sports, sport, interscholastic inter sports in South Carolina. With that being said, let's stay on topic. We can have a reasonable debate, we can disagree, but this isn't an issue. I had a colleague earlier this morning outside of this body that tried to make this a racial issue who seemed to suggest that being transgender was on par with being an African American in his defense or opposition to the bill that we're here on. We don't need that, that's beyond the pale. Let's stick to the core issue. Let's talk about what we're here today, and that is whether or not transgender boys should be playing sports in South Carolina with our girls. And the answer to that question, for me, is no. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I rise this afternoon to fully support this legislation. I want to first say that dif different does not mean inferior. There's a world of difference between all of us. Some of us are tall, some of us are very short, some of us are round, some of us are slim, but that doesn't mean that any of us are better than the others. There are fundamental differences between men and women, and we can't overlook those differences. I have a little girl. She's six, and I'm doing my best to raise her to understand that she can take the world by storm and do whatever it is she wants to do. But sometimes she may have to go about it a little differently than a little boy does. Does that mean that little boy is better than her? No. It just means that we're different. Well, you may say, what do you mean, Representative McKnight? Let me tell you, I proudly served my country in the United States Army, beside women. But they had different, different physical fitness standards than I did. Their PT test requirements were different than mine. They had to do less push-ups than I did. They had to run, more, they had a longer time to run their two-mile run than I did. But does that mean they're incapable of being good soldiers? Absolutely not. We have women that are firefighters. Their physical fitness standards are different than their male counterparts. Does that mean they can't be good firefighters? Absolutely not. We have wonderful women in law enforcement. Their physical fitness standards are different than men. Are they any less good cops than, the male, than their male counterparts? Absolutely not. I've heard and I share the concerns of how transgender children may deal with this. But I have to ask the question, how are our little girls going to deal with this? What am I going to tell Claire when she goes out to compete and she may have to run against a boy and she loses? How do I console my child? Do you want me to lie to her and tell her that it's okay, honey? 
if you work a little harder, you'll eventually win? No. So just like those transgender children have feelings, concerns that need to be thought about, our little girls do too. And I can be against something and not hate the people that are on the other side of that issue. It is too late in the day for us to be drawing silly lines like that of either just black and white absolute. There are things that I don't like. Whatever happened, and I'm not at all suggesting that what transgender people are doing are sins, but whatever happened to loving the sinner and not liking the sin? We need to make certain at the end of the day that our little girls, our young women, and our women have the opportunity to compete on the highest level on the fairest playing field possible. I don't need to tell you all that when I saw the image of the swim team, the dynamic, the visual dynamic that we saw, the one transgender woman that won, and all the remaining ladies that came in second and third place. Do you know why they came in second or third place? Because that transgender lady used to be a man who swam like a man. And you cannot get over the fact that that transgender young lady comes with the physiological advantages of being a man and those advantages cannot be overcome by women. Now, I'm certain there'll be someone who'll tell me, but oh, what about Billie Jean King beating the gentleman at tennis? There are, zero, there are no absolutes in this world except Jesus Christ is Lord. There are exceptions to every rule except for that one. But I'm telling you now, we need to make certain that our girls are protected, and I'm committed to that. So let the chips fall where they may. I'll receive the air of people who send me nasty notes like they did before. But I sleep good at night, and you want to know why? Because in my heart, I believe I'm doing the right thing. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Take a look at the House roll call list. This is Christian News T.Y. I'm Tony Conyers. If there are any newsworthy events, we will get them to you as soon as possible. If not, you can follow us on Christian News T.Y. Facebook. You can follow us on YouTube and you can follow us on our website.